Hey Cloud Gamers, I'm here to talk to you about Nware or Play Nware as it can also be called, which is a new beta system for playing games in the cloud. Seems to be a lot of cloud gaming services popping up recently, and this one was quite hard to get into. I had to sign up to a waiting list and it took several weeks to actually get a code. Now, there is a few things about Nware. The support seems to be a bit slow at the moment. I think it must be only a few people that are using this or are pitching this and that would be part of the reason why. At the moment only PC is supported and you do need to download an application. The first time I tried to download this it was flagged as a virus. I did email them and let them know in case it was a false positive. And it looks like that has now been resolved and I was able to download and install the application but without issue. Because it needs this application obviously it does make things a little less smooth, although clients do give a better experience overall than just using the browser generally. So once you've logged into the interface, you do have to connect your Steam account, and it does become apparent very quickly that this is a Steam only solution. So if you're looking to use your Epic Game Store games versions or any others here, then you are out of luck. It is Steam only, and not all Steam games are supported. You'll see in the interface that there are a few games greyed out and there are some options for it to give you a notice if you click on those when those games are supported. You can filter it to just games that you have in your library and that makes it a little bit easier to identify which games are supported. So it is looking very much like a GeForce Now model here except it's currently limited to Steam only, whether that becomes different in future is unknown at this stage. As we get into launching a game, we'll have a look at the quality. It does take quite a long time to start up these machines. It looks like it is starting a virtual machine in the background. I've sped this footage up quite a lot as it took four minutes to launch the machine to run Final Fantasy 15. Also, because I had it on a second screen, it kept minimizing and going back to the primary screen, which was quite annoying. So if you do have multiple screens, make sure that the primary screen is the one that you want to be playing on. I did switch this later and it did sort this issue out, but it was quite annoying that every time I kind of minimized it or something loaded, it would flip back to the primary screen. As this is beta, we can only hope that these sort of things get sorted. You can see that it took four minutes to load Final Fantasy 15 and then to actually load the game itself, it only took one minute, which is actually pretty good going. The rig behind it, as you can see in the top left, isn't too bad. At least that's in the top left are from the game itself in Final Fantasy 15. You can see that the input lag isn't bad at all, but there is a fair quality drop. So this is on the higher settings, but without all the extra hair and other effects and video effects. However, we can see that the quality is a little bit downgraded. Just what are you we can to? really see it as we look out at the car or also the background. We kind of got that grainy texture. even though not all of the video RAM or processor is being used. I think the codecs that are being used here are causing quite a lot of stream compression. So one of the other issues I came across was trying to run Destiny 2. It only took two minutes to launch, which was fairly good. And then unfortunately it hung and I just got a, this 100% and then eventually it just went to a black screen. So there are still some issues with the games and it is under a beta tag, so that is to be expected. So just be warned that not all of the games that even it says supported will work. Finally there is an extra add-on which shows that this is really just virtual machines being run in the background. You can get access to just a virtual machine with 100 gigs of storage. It looks like also that the premium plan is going to be $5 a month, which is not too bad. But this virtual machine gives you full access, like a normal computer with Steam already associated. 
So you can then download and install Steam games that were not supported directly on the client earlier. I'm not sure why they've gone this route, but when I did try to use it, the download speed of the machine that it gave me wasn't great. I was getting peaks of around 20 megabits per second, and that meant that downloading Destiny 2, for example, was going to take about an hour or two. And I don't think that that is really the point of cloud gaming. I know you've got systems like Shadow PC and Maximum Settings, which already pitch themselves as a full-blown PC. They kind of expect to be going through that download, but you've also got 50 to 100 meg speeds as well, so it removes some of that pain. Overall, Nware or Play Nware is a very interesting system, and I will continue to cover it as the system grows, but at the moment it is a very early beta stage, and use it with caution. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Cloud Gaming Extreme for all of the latest across all cloud gaming platforms, and I will see you next time.